Becoming the Dragon Queen, Part 2. Starting the costume. The next real challenge was figuring out how to translate the artwork into a physical costume. I printed out the costume artwork design so I could look at it while working. A duct tape dummy of myself was used as a mannequin, so I can build the costume around it. With this, the final costume will fit on my body shape with more accuracy. The duct tape dummy is stuffed with packing material and foam pieces. I added in sculpted foam around the exterior of the duct tape dummy. The foam pieces are held together with more duct tape. After that, the next step was to get cardboard and paper and cut it up. I choose cardboard because I had a lot of it lying around and it was easy to cut. After that, cardboard was cut up and laid over the shape I had on the duct tape dummy. This would start forming the main dragon pattern. I went through lots of cardboard to get this process done. Masking tape was used to stick the pattern pieces together. The cardboard body shape is the biggest part to figure out since this would be the basic part of starting the costume itself. For the legs, I wanted to give the illusion of a standing dragon and not just straight legs. The duty grade pattern was fairly easy to make. The hardest part will be cutting it up and translating it into something walkable for the final costume. Making a cardboard tail. I started off with a flat, curvy pattern. This pattern was fairly basic and didn't look 3D at all. From that, I made strips of cardboard that circled around the tail. These loops were shaped into the curvy pattern of the tail itself. The loops got smaller the closer you got to the end of the tail. I kept the loops closely connected just so I can get a solid pattern out of it and take it apart for the foam tracing after. The pattern for the tip of the tail was not used because it didn't work out like I wanted. In the end, I went with completely random strips of EVA foam and built it up from there. Cardboard patterns for the feet. I had made costume animal feet before, so this was something I was familiar with. I started off with a flat cardboard base of the foot. The toe patterns are a loop of cardboard shaped like a toe. Claw patterns are a wedge with a pointed tip. The toes and claws need to have hollow pattern parts to keep the weight down of the final costume. The hand pattern. The hand pattern was originally a trace of my hand with two fingers in the center merged to create the illusion of a four-fingered dragon hand. The hand pattern itself was just a flat pattern that I traced twice to make a glove. The wing pattern. The wing pattern was really tricky to create. The base of the wings is a mix of pipe and mechanical parts. So the pattern for the wings needed to be designed around it without interfering with those parts. I traced the wing arm pattern into three main parts, the base, the arm, and the tip. The webbing of the wing was made with a white paper pattern so it would lay flat and be easy to trace onto fabric later. The dragon scales were done with simple stenciled patterns. The only scale patterns that were different were the chest and the leg scale patterns. I used brown paper to lay it over the body shape and trace scales onto the paper. Afterward, I took the paper patterns and cut them up for tracing onto foam. The armor was tricky because it had to go over the dragon costume itself. Most of the armor patterns had to be mirrored to look the same on each side. I would draw half of the armor design on the cardboard and flip it over to mirror the pattern. Then I would trace it onto the other half and recut the cardboard pattern with the entire pattern as a whole.